So I saw Marvel Studios' Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which we actually see the the third movie of the Ant-Man movie series, which is also the aftermath of the Avengers Endgame, which we actually have <clears throat> Paul Ru returns as Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man, and Ilian Lily as Hope Van Dyne, aka The Wasp, which also have Michael Douglas, Michelle Pollard, Jonathan Miller as Kane the Conqueror, and the OG Ghostbuster himself, Bill Murray, and all the other cast. So we knew that this is where the third movie where Ant-Man and his friends are in the quantum realm face off against a villain who can manipulate time. So here is the review right now. So the movie begins with Janet Van Dyne who's trapped in the quantum realm from the first movie who actually sacrificed herself 30 years until she ran into Kang, who played by Jonathan Majors, who actually will play the role of <clears throat> Damien in the upcoming Creed 3 with Michael B. Jordan, which time has passed since the events in Avengers Endgame with Scott Lane returning is Paul Rue, who actually gained notoriety and a celebrity to the public after releasing his autobiography book, Look Out for the Little Guy, which he actually made some friends with F me, FBI agent Jerry Rue, with a brief appearance by Randall Parks, and of course, got a promotion by the Baskin Robbins manager Dale, who's actually played by Craig Tuckington, which we knew how he is actually is from the first movie who fired him as well, which we knew how we see Hope Van Dyne his actually is Scott's lover, who's also taken the medal of the Wasp, who's now actually served as the head of Pim Van Dyne's foundation, which actually is a company, which they started a relationship with each other. And as soon as <clears throat> Scott finished his book, we actually got a call that Cassie Lang, who's played by Caitlin Newton, who's in jail after learning how she was actually in trouble, which actually using the technology to shrink police cars, in which we see Hank and Janet celebrating actually having a dinner, which of course Michael Douglas and Michelle Hirshhor actually return, knowing of how they are actually having a serious talk about Cassidy in trouble. But she actually tells them that she created a radio that can actually connect everything which we see the ants creating their own technology, which actually is very smart, and they actually created a radio that actually connects to the quantum well, which Janet is actually afraid, in which we knew how they were actually have the tech all wrong when they're all being sucked into the quantum realm, which Hope and Scott went through it with Hank, Janet, and Cassie, who went inside, knowing of their being separated. 
So now they put on the suits to actually get through the realm, which they're actually separated into two groups. I mean, Scott and Cassidy in one, then Hope, Hank, and Janet are in the second, which Janet knew that there was actually trouble, knowing that she came back to the Quantum Realm, knowing how he has actually, knowing of the fact that he actually is coming, by which Scott and Cassidy was captured by the residents of the Quantum Realm as they drink the ooze that can translate to them, which helped by Fern, who's actually voiced by David Das Malkshen, who's actually played Kirk in the first two Ant-Man films, and also the Polka Dot Man in the 2021 movie The Suicide Squad, which they actually was greeted by Quill, who is actually played by William Jackson Harper, a telepath who can read minds, and Jane Tora, who's played by Caddy O'Brien, a freedom fighter who fight injustice in the quantum realm. So Janet told Hank and Hope that she knows someone who can help them, in which she actually got help from an old friend named Chrysler or Lord Chrysler, who was played by the OG Ghostbuster himself, Bill Murray, who actually knew about the history with Janet, as he actually informs the group family about their notice, as we knew how they are actually being attacked which they hijack Chrysler's ship as they escape, in which we knew how Scott's group had been attacked as well, which of course Cassie got her own suit that actually has the same features as Scott and Hope, knowing of how Janet reveals Hank and Hope that she met Kang the Conqueror, as they knew how he was had the ability to travel to time, as we knew how he can help her go back to hope. But she realized and saw her mind when they finished at the vice with the core which he saw his mind that he conquered many worlds in the multiverse, which Hank knew about the multiverse, which actually happens with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Spider-Man No Way Home, and knowing how she knew about it. So she took the core and used the growth disk to actually enlarge the core so they realized that he cannot use it. That's when we knew how Scott's group were attacked by Murdoch, who happens to be Darren Cross, which returning is Corey Stoll, who was Yellow Jacket, but thanks to Scott's battle in the final round in the first movie, he was actually mutated to his giant head and goes by the name of Murdoch, with his arms and legs being shrunk, he actually became a weapon, which Scott met Kang and tells him about what he's need him to get the core, in which he agrees, and he also agrees to take him back to time to prevent him not going into the quantum realm from the second Ant-Man movie. So they sent him down to get the core, knowing how the probabilities are actually come together. 
in which they multiply into Scots, which one of them dress up in the Baskin Robin outfit, and which knowing how Hope did the same thing, as they realized they heard Cassidy's voice as they getting ready to send him up to help him defeat the core and shrunk would hope did the same as they got the core they were ambushed by Kang and he took the core and Janet hostage as Murdoch met Hank again as he blew up the ship knowing of Hank he actually heard the voice of the ants actually came to help him knowing of how he have, act have actually saw him in trouble knowing how he also knew what actually happened but they actually knew that Kang didn't hold up his end of the deal so Cassidy had decided to break free as Kang unleashed the core, sending a message saying that history is not written but forged as they are about to head towards the human realm. As Cassidy broke free, freeing Gentora, we saw her hijack the broadcast system and send them the message to the people, telling them to fight, knowing of how they decided to fight as well as she have actually fight Murdoch as Hank, me, Scott grow into giant man to battle Kang as we knew how he will defeat Kang for lying knowing of how they actually beat him and free the others and which Murdoch was about to defeat Cassidy when she grew into her own giant form and defeat Murdoch in which she told him, excuse my language, but not being a dick by which they actually have a reunion knowing of how they are actually giants by which we see Kang battling them but Murdoch have a change of heart as he defeats Kang, sacrificing himself, which he said that he'll die in it as an adventure, which could count, but Janet has used the energy to take them all home, only one shot, but as soon as everyone has, have actually escaped, we knew how Kang is not finished with Scott, as he bring him back, battling him, as he saw the portal trying to escape, Scott will not allow him to do so, as a bloody battle actually happened. Knowing of how Scott said that he doesn't have to win, but only lose, using the remaining shrink and grow disc on the core, knowing of how Kang was sent away, we knew how he is going to be defeated when Janet sacrificed herself to help Scott as he vanished, trapping both of them all together, which they've actually got home with Cassidy's help, which Scott has started a new autobiography book, thinking about what King has said and worry about the impending death that he's about to unleash. But he wasn't worried about that as the others have celebrating Cassidy's late birthday, by which we knew how we knew this would be a celebration. But there are two credit scenes that actually happen. One is King meeting himself, one in the old time clothes, and the other in the Egyptian clothes, and then the which he say about the other probabilities that they will actually go to the human world and start the war, which of course led to the Avengers Kang Dynasty and the Secret War, 
And of course, the second, which is the pose credit scene of Loki and Morpheus all together meeting Kang as well, which of course is from the first season of Loki, which starring Tom Hillison and Owen Wilson in his first MCU appearance, which the movie ends there. And even though the critics does have mixed reviews of the movie, I've actually enjoyed it as well. Although we didn't actually get to see what happened to Louise, Kirk, and Dave, which Dave is my favorite character in the Ant-Man movies, we knew how Ant-Man battled Kang in the Quantum Realm. Plus, Bill Murray, the Ghostbuster, in his first MCU appearance, which I'm hoping to see other actors in their first MCU appearances as well. But Jonathan Miller as Kang was incredible, and I cannot wait to see him as Damien in Creed 3 when it released in March. So I cannot wait to see what's going to happen when the movies say Kang will return in the two new Avengers movies that's going to come out. So anyway, like this video, subscribe for more, and comment what we think about the movie review. You guys can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and my Facebook page and Twitch. Let's land. This is Anime God 100 here saying signing out. Waiters and be safe.